Hello, hello, hello. It is time for another live hangout here at the World of Oz with myself. And today we're going to have a special guest, Henrik from Tech Drone Media. Hopefully the mic's working and everything is going all right. And we have a few people hopefully join with us in the chat. Agent K, by the way, you got a wrench. And Mel, you've got a wrench too. What's going on, everybody? I want to share a few things today with the... Um, the original, well, not the original, the new Mavic Air 2 drone. So if you're watching this on a playback, we're going to talk a lot about the Mavic Air 2, which just came out. A lot of clips are going to be shown uh, that we've been using, myself as well as Tech Drone Media, about, Mike is very loud. Ooh, huh, let me see if I can adjust that. Hey, how? Oh. Give me a second, guys. We'll get back at it. I'm going to see if I can adjust my microphone. I don't see a way to do that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hmm. Is that any better? Hopefully that's a little better. Either that or I'll, I'll, not, I'll not talk as loud. All right. So those who are joining with us live, welcome again. It's going to be a good show. We're going to have a lot of information about the Mavic Air 2, and we got an awesome guest coming with me, a very good friend of mine, Henrik from Tech Drone Media. We're going to share a lot of clips between the two of us. I want to talk a lot about this new active track because a lot of people are giving it some serious props. And you guys know in the stuff that I do, active track is something that's pretty important. And today, this morning, I actually went out at 8 a.m. and went out to the mountain with the Mavic Air 2, as well as with my Skydio. And I have some clips from both of those that I want to I want to share with you guys. So before we bring Henrik in, let me just check with the chat there. We've got Mel in us there, uh, 400 AGL, Agent K. Hello from Scotland. Hello back to you, daddy of thir 13, like 13 children. Oh, my God. That would kill me. Uh, Mike sounds like it's okay, Don says. Um, Sunrise Water Media is with us in the room. Tim Jackson's with us. Elbow bumps. That's the way to do it nowadays in 2020. It's all about the elbows, right? Ray's, man, we've got a good group of everybody joining in all right. Oh, it's a cracking drone so far, so good. And I've got some opinions all about the Air 2, and we're going we're gonna to get to all of them on here. I have a lot more videos that I'm actually making that we're going to share more with it. But for now, um, let's bring in Henrik. Hey, hey, hey <laughs> Henrik. Hey, is the audio okay? Yeah, excellent. It is. I'm yep, premier, I I'm hear you just fine. Hopefully new, everyone uh, in the chat can hear him. The new microphone. That's all over the place here. <laughs> oh, nice! You got a you, you got a screen popper there, so you can yeah, you know these keep the peas from being too. Yes, yes, that's a pop yep. filter. If I take that one yep, away, yep. you can hear all the peas, and it says oh, pop. <laughs> oh, look, we got a great little room going. We got Jake Salone just joined in. Hey, Jake, it's good to see you in here. Genesee is in the house as well. Ah, oh, that's awesome. In and out, depending on the hot dogs. I guess a lot of people are barbecuing today. It is Memorial Day. So let's take a second and uh, say thanks to all the guys who have lost their lives fighting for the country to uh, keep it free. Let's hope uh, we don't lose too many more in the next coming years or whatever. Who knows what's happening now? Everything's crazy over here. It's, it's crazy over there, too, where you are right now, huh? Yes. The enemy is changing shape. Yeah. It seems I'd Maybe like to hear more about that, but we'll we'll save that privately. I don't know if we should bring the <laughs> politics too into this. No, no, but we shouldn't. <laughs> for, for those that don't know, Henrik runs Tech Drone Media, which is an awesome channel, a uh, very drone-related channel if you're not already following him, and he is based out of Denmark. So it's interesting because he has to study up on American laws because he has his channel got to a lot of American people, as well as he has to be familiar with his own city and or country's laws uh, there in Denmark. So... He's, he's got a lot going on in his head there. <laughs> As uh, when you have an audience that is on both sides of uh, the pond, then uh, you need to <laughs> be careful yeah. what you show because some might be legal here and some might be not. So, yeah, and we are using a, a live broadcast that a lot of you turned me on to, StreamYard, uh, which is pretty cool. It's an easy way to, for us to share from each of our computers instead of me having to bring all the files in. And I trust Henrik. I don't think we're going to end up seeing any uh, full moons or anything on the screen. He's going to be playing some nice Mavic Air 2 videos as well. So um, let's and see. And they are all stripped of audio, so there's no more copyright problems. 
problems. Oh, there you go. And you'll just have to talk over them, explain what's yeah, going yeah. on. Yeah, that was the idea. Short clips that we can talk over. Yeah, the problem is I was out all morning, Henrik, filming. I climbed up to the mountain and we went and found this area and I brought the Mavic Air with me and I brought the Skydio with me and did a bunch of filming right until I had to be here. So I just copied all those files over. <laughs> Luckily, I can scrub through them and hopefully find some cool stuff to, to show and talk about. I bet you can. So um, let's see who else we got in here. How should we start this? What should we start first? Uh, since if you're watching this on the replay, you can skip around and we're going to have some chatter and then we're going to have some stuff that we show about the Mavic Air 2 and then we're going to have some chatter and then some more stuff that we show and then some chatter. So if you don't like the chatter and you're not here in the in the chat with us, you missed out, but uh, you know, <laughs> still you can skip around and see all this footage. And, and if you're really on the fence about if you should buy this drone or not, hopefully today's live stream will help you with that decision. Because I think we both have enough experience with this drone that we can we're gonna have a few similar views and a few probably contrasting views. Because if I recall, Henrik, let's let's start out with this. Um, when you first got it, <laughs> <laughs> when you first got it. You were telling me that you thought it stopped really quick, that it was abruptly, it would quickly come to a stop. Yes. Mine does not. I've almost hit myself in the face multiple times. Yeah, I times. saw that on some of your videos. Say, yeah. I, was, I was actually surprised at how responsive it was, at least I mean, when I I'm, tested it. I'm not saying it's not responsive, but when I let go of the sticks, it it's almost like it's in cinematic mode. It wants to keep going for a little bit before it stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is not how I'm used to most of my other DJI drones flying. Now, if you double tap the, um, is it the return to home button? And it yeah. puts a pause on it, it stops immediately. And that's how I thought it was going to react when you had told me it stopped real quick. In your video, it looked like it stopped pretty quick. It was, but I, I'm not sure that I let go of the sticks, actually. What did you I do just, to stop it? Pull back? I don't know. Pull back. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mel says he's waiting for someone to donate a Mavic Air 2 to my channel. <laughs> or to his channel, to his channel. But I, nobody donated one to me. I had to buy that dang thing. And honestly, I, I you know what? I'm, let's go right to what I like the most. What I like the most is what I thought I was going to hate the most. And that's the controller. I actually thought from all the videos and all the premieres that I saw out there that I was going to despise the controller, that it was going to just suck. That it was hmm. because of the size of it. I thought I was never going to put it in my pocket, but I, you know, I only put things in my pocket here and there when I do these hikes. Usually I have a backpack and the controller is a little bigger, but the, to me, if the sticks are so smooth. Yes. I, I liked it uh, as well. also like the way that the antenna was, uh, is uh, nicely integrated in, uh, in the remote and having the screen on top, that's a bit back to the old phantom days. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's really nice. So there's a lot of people that got into this hobby once the Mavic came out, so they don't realize that drones used to always have the screens above the sticks. That, yes. That's how it was um, for years. And the Mavic came out, and that's when it really started going underneath. Although the Blade Chroma actually had a built-in screen, it was ahead of its time. It was underneath the sticks as well, which was weird at the time, but it became commonplace once the Mavic line came out. Yeah. Oh, so and I thank you, Agent K. I appreciate that. Yeah, everybody uh, who hits the thumbs up, we appreciate that. And, and the funny thing is we had a thumbs down on this video last night, Henrik, prior to it even being close to going out. So uh, I, I, I don't know. I, you know, it's probably just some ash hole that, that <laughs> hit the thumbs I, down. I actually, I actually think it's people, uh, of course, you could always have haters that would that would thumb down, thumb down your videos. But I actually think it's people that they dislike uh, premieres. Really? Yeah. Huh, interesting. So when they see the premiere and they click on it and then find out it's uh, <laughs> it's not until uh, 12, 12 hours later or something, then they get pretty pretty pissed. I, I don't but know. I tried to put the uh, the live thing because my I don't have a live time that I do. Um, I'm trying hard. There's so many people who do live shows and I'm trying so hard not to step on toes and do it at the same times. Yeah. And I think midday like this has definitely done that. YouTube has actually put together a um, – uh, a new thing for you you who are all watching, who are sort of dabbling in your YouTube channels, they now have put in a, a, an analytic that will show you when the majority of your people watch your videos. And yeah, mine, mine is between like 9 a.m. and 12 
PM. It's it's really not what I thought it would be at all. But most people on my channel is actually from US, so it's uh, <laughs> so it's more, it's more or less the same. Yeah, it's interesting because that that just means that everyone goes to work, and instead of actually working, they pull up YouTube and start watching <laughs> videos. <laughs> oh, look at that! We got uh, Mel throwing a super sticker. How cool is that? Thank you so much, Mel. With a cool little dude lifting weights. And speaking of weights, I actually just super sticker. have been able to start going to CrossFit again, which uh, I'm going to drop this belly by the end of the summer. And you'll see this all change. I'll be all oh, like this. You all pumped? <laughs> <laughs> I hope something because it's harder as you get older. You, know, I'm fast you would, you would uh, look like an Evo 2. About what? An Evo 2. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Evo 2, all on steroids and stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> it looks a bit pumped. <laughs> uh, let's see. What what do you have some content? Uh, something that you want to show? We can start out with one of your clips. Yeah, I don't know how we do this actually. So so on your screen, you should be able to see something down at the bottom that says share screen. I think share screen. Yeah. Now when you click that, if it has audio, usually what I do is then go um to the uh, to the top. You can see there's entire screen, application window, and Chrome tab. I will usually share Chrome tab, and then at the bottom left, you can share the audio if it has audio. It doesn't have audio, so we just talk over it. Okay. And I, have a, I have a few different clips here. I don't know where we want to start. I have uh, the hyperlapse sample. I have something about active track. Um, uh, I have a, a short clip of the Birdman. The Birdman? What is it? You know, you know this guy that, uh, <laughs> that sort of attacked me while I was flying? The first flight with the drone. Oh, the guy who came and was like, not the, not, the, not, the full, not the full clip because <laughs> I would save that for the channel, but at least we could talk about it. Yeah. We'll talk about the it's, incident. I agree. That that kind of stuff does happen. I think there's yeah, still was, a uh, lot more people out there that think drones are spying on them. Yeah, that was, than, a, that was a crazy is. experience. Right. I would well, say. Uh, why don't you start with your 8K? That, or your maybe. It was not actually an 8K though. Was no, it? no. So, but but let's play it first, and then we can talk about it afterward. Oh yeah. Let me just figure out how to do this. So, if if you at home watching this right now with us joining in, chatting away, have the Mavic Air 2, go ahead and put a thumbs up or something in the chat so we can see who already has one um, in their hands. And if you're getting one later, you know, um, you can uh, mention that as well if you want to. Or if you're still on the fence, that would be pretty cool too. Just to sort of let us know. Uh, David, you didn't miss much yet. We're just getting ready to start showing some clips. And we're going to be talking about, whoa, Genesee, just sorry. When I get a super chat, I got to interrupt everybody and go right to it. Way to go, Mel. Let's get this party started. Jenna, so awesome. Jenna actually has one of my shirts from the channel, um, which is pretty cool. I'm, I, I know I keep saying I'm going to design new ones, but I'm so busy, guys. The shop is sort of reopening. I'm back in business. And... I'm taking some appointments here and there. Everything's not back in full swing. Money's not back exactly how it used to be, um, but I'm surviving. So hopefully everybody at home is doing the same. You got it ready, Henrik? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I just up upgraded my uh, operating system this weekend, and uh, now it will have all sorts of uh, – uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. There's no audio unless I restart the browser. That would mean that I would be thrown off. But let's just see what we can do here now. Uh, Chrome tab. And, and just so you guys know, if you're watching this on replay or even now, Agent K just threw a link up to my merch store, which has ba – it's basically one or two designs. I can't remember how designs are in it. But if you notice – where is it? Right – oh, I can't. Here, I'm going to make full screen real quick. Right there, this little guy there, that is a skull. But if you look carefully, it's actually a real Mavic Pro original props – and arms that come off of that skull with like a outer space kind of scene to symbolize like he's flying around and stuff and that's on a lot of different products in that merch store okay i have the clip ready now okay let me uh let's share your screen boom there you go yeah. so let's just play it it's only 12 seconds all right I'm this was my let's make my first screen. attempt to do a hyperlapse i'm gonna let a you very very beautiful place uh, in denmark and uh, if you noticed did you see the shadow of the dragon? No, rewind it. Uh, let's uh, let's do it again here. Yeah. Just notice, 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 notice. That's a beautiful shot. So boom, there it was. <laughs> oh yeah, he flew. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a really beautiful, beautiful shot. shot. Yeah, um, see if you can expand it. You can click expand and make it full screen maybe and play it again. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see what happens if I do that. Is it full oh, screen there we go. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so oh, let's do that. So, so what you can say is uh, I set my mind out to it. Uh, I had this uh, Mavic Air 2 and, uh, and one of the key uh, highlights with it was the 8K Hyperlapse. So, of course, I thought I would uh, I would do this um, and I would choose a location that was uh, worthy of doing an 8K Hyperlapse. But it actually turned out that <laughs> it, it ended up not being an 8K Hyperlapse because I had all sorts of problems uh, while I was uh, recording it. And... Uh, there was a few things that I maybe I should have spent a little bit more time studying or trying out the feature before I went up there because uh, I only had one battery and I was driving like, I, I don't know, half an hour to get to that location or 20 minutes. So it had to work uh, while I was there. So I was uh, pretty convinced that I would do the 8K hyperlapse and uh, that I would do the circle mode around the castle and uh, then have a really fantastic clip. But that kept failing on me. It was like uh, it was uh, starting to record maybe 10, 15, 20 pictures, and then it was simply just stopping. So I had to make a fast decision there. So I decided to go for uh, the course lock instead. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know at that, uh, that time was uh, that either circle or course lock would allow you to do 8K hyperlapse. Which, so, which one does allow... Uh, the, the free and uh, the waypoint. What, the free one is my least favorite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't who, who wants, I mean, a hyperlapse rarely comes out when you're manually yeah. controlling it very well. It's usually sort of floppy and, and whatever. And and there's two things to notice uh, when you watch it. Uh, of course, it would have been nice with some of these uh, puffy clouds moving across the sky or catching the ferry in the background, uh, going back and forward. Uh, but but uh, the timing was not right for, for that. That was one thing to notice. The other thing is that uh, it actually looks beautiful. So that's three, three things. But it probably also needs a little bit of stabilization in post. It kind of jumps a little bit around. Yeah. And you, you know what? I, I actually have found the same thing with uh, my new Air compared to my Mavic Zoom. My hyperlapses are a little bit more up and down. It seems like the drone is going up and down a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm and, trying and to... And they could they could fix that. I'm pretty sure they could fix that in software, because you can just pull it in uh, in Final Cut and then stabilize it there, and uh, it will move, it looks a lot smoother if you do that. Uh, I'm trying to trying to keep showing that. I, I, what I like is look at look at the water at the first of your clip there when you first yeah. play it, and you can see all the water moving. You can see the waves actually coming through. But also the boat in the background. This one that's oh, a pretty big. Uh, <laughs> that's a pretty big boat. That's like a super tanker something that moves oh yeah i didn't even notice that the first time look at that that would be quite a high speed for uh, for a super tanker if that was <laughs> right. one to one also the car that runs over the pier that's uh, kind of nice and and normally you're not uh, like not normally but you're not allowed to fly in this area you're not allowed to fly over the castle it's really? how, did, uh, how did you get that approved it's because they don't own the water oh Okay. So I actually uh, contacted them and asked them, what, what are the rules uh, for me flying up there? And they said, I'm not allowed to fly over the premises and uh, because uh, you need a very good reason for, uh, for to do that. That needs to be approved. It's actually the government that owns this, uh, this facility or this castle. Uh, so then you flying around it like what you do for this... Um... Yeah, but, but then I asked for like a plot so I could see where their land was actually going for. And, and the place that I was taking off, I don't know if you, I don't think you can see it, but there's a small, uh, on this side of the, on the left side of the castle, there's a small, uh, what a beach or what you can say. And that is yep. not part of, uh, of this, uh, of their facility. So I normally take off there and then I keep myself over water. It's a beautiful shot, though, because you, you want to see the castle anyway. So if you're flying yeah, right yeah. over and, it, and if you're going there in the morning, you would get the morning sun directly on the castle. I actually have another clip maybe uh, where you could see it better. Yeah. Let's just see uh, if I can pull that in. So uh, well, That's a cool see. shot, too. Uh, yeah. I've got a water that's, shot that's in the, the chair. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the beach where you take out from. Mm-hmm. So let's just go here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there you can see the castle when I go around it. It's a little further away. Yeah, that's that's a really cool area to fly right there. 
Is that, yeah, what is that the, in the back? Is that a giant boat way back in the back in that white and thing? They, those are ferries. They oh, go to okay. Sweden. They are ferries to, uh, yeah, I should probably have shown that because Sweden is actually close uh, by. It's only four kilometers away from this location. So I could fly my drone over there if I <laughs> so, so, <laughs> but they had uh, to do it. <laughs> anybody, anybody real quick know what four kilometers is in uh, miles? Because I have no idea. The it's 1.67-ish in difference. Oh. Oh, if that's only a mile and a half or two miles, you should yeah, two totally, miles or something. Yeah, you should totally make a video flying my drone from Denmark to Sweden. Oh, there's too many dicks around for me to do that here. Well, no, I, would but, get, but, I would get busted and. Uh, but you're and, over uh, the water. Find, there's nothing there. And find yeah, but I'm crossing into another country. I, I I'm oh. pretty sure that will go. <laughs> a know. lot of headlines. You might have to look into that. That could be a really big video. <laughs> I will not be the one that would that would be doing that. <laughs> that's for sure. That's All right, let, sure. let's take a second and go through the chat and see what we've missed here. Um, yeah. So let me just, uh, yeah, what else can I say? I, I okay, that... okay, for the people that are wondering uh, what castle this is actually is, is uh, if you had, I think you have Shakespeare that's mandatory in uh, school in the US. Mm -hmm, yep, and no this is actually uh, the, the castle of Hamlet. Oh, really? It's the one that's inside uh, that, that, that was used as a foundation for this, uh, this story. I had no idea. I thought Shakespeare was all in England. No, 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 no. It's this one. Okay, that's so. If we learn something new on the, on the channel today, <laughs> yeah, the Tech Drone History Channel. That's excellent. I so actually I, messed. I, I actually messed it up a few times, as Sean. Where I and I'm, you know, when it, how it is, you're out flying and you see this fantastic stuff, and you want to tell this uh, great story about the place that you're seeing. Yeah. And ah, damn it! I should I should take a little time on reading up of stuff before. <laughs> You know, to tell about I mean, it. I've actually thought of going out and then just filming <laughs> and then coming back and narrating some some talking over yeah, the filming. I think that would be better. A talking head, just just to talk about the area because a lot of times, like you said, you're out about, you've got your drone, you're like, oh my god, this looks amazing, and you're yeah. flying, yeah. and then you're like, wait. Then you can half half about remember what it's about yeah. this place, but you forget half of the details, and some of it is uh, sometimes wrong. So it's a. Uh, Let's see. Uh, here we got someone saying, anyone else have problem with the Air 2 when you, they use quick shots or hyperlapse that stops after a few seconds? Like it doesn't, it, it's not completing? Are you saying it's not completing the task and not recording it? Or it just doesn't go very far? That's that's the question I'm asking back to you, if I pronounce your name correctly, Mat Matthias. Uh, let me know and we'll, we'll scroll down and find the answer in a minute. Uh, Peter Hughes from England is in the house. Peter has been a longtime subscriber. I see Rick Halber is in, the, in here with us. Uh, there's a lot of people joining today. I saw Chris Hope in here. Uh, a lot of regulars in the drone channels coming in, supporting, and we we love that. We love seeing everybody come in. I see a lot of community. familiar faces. Oh, so it's that's, great. Uh, that's uh, pretty nice. Also, there might be subscribers to both our channels, but I, I, I bet some of them... Uh, it's actually here because I posted something on uh, the Tech Drone Media community feed. That's excellent. Yeah, Peter uh, here is saying that the UK model isn't equipped with AirSense. And honestly, Peter, I think it's not just the UK model. I think it's everybody's model except for the US. Um, yeah, it is. Um, Henrik, yours did not have AirSense in it when you had nope. it, right? Yeah. Not at all. Uh, mine does, but um, I've not had anything turn on. You have to actually turn AirSense on when you get the drone. Um, and for those of you who don't know what AirSense is, it's a feature that the Mavic Air 2 has, which lets you sort of see when other aircraft are in your vicinity. You do have to actually go into the settings and turn it on, or at least I did. It came off from stock. Um, but again, I live somewhere where you don't see a whole lot of low-flying air traffic because they would hit mountain peaks. If they did, it'd be pretty bad. Um Rick has two shirts. That's pretty awesome, Rick. I appreciate that. I need to design more stuff because if somebody's already bought one shirt, they're what are they gonna? They, you know, what else are they gonna do? I need to come up with something that's more drone related, and then some things that aren't as drone related too. Uh, okay, where are we going? Mel says he has a tattoo of that skull safely on display in a shadow box, and yes, he did. And that was a fun time for those who went to Austin Drone Spin Up. We had everybody play rock paper scissors, and the winner was Mel and he got that prize. It was it was a lot of fun. It was pretty cool. There's the one on there, what the, the artificial skin or what was it? It, it was tattooed. So, yep. So um, you know, for those who don't know, I, I'm a tattoo artist. Uh, this is actually my tattoo studio back room where we're at. And um, years ago I made I did a lot of special effects makeup and I created this 
this um, fake skin that you can actually tattoo on and just play your tattoo work out there. And that's that's what Mel won is is one of those. Uh, it's, there we go. What was that? I saw something. Let me see if I'm in the chat. Oh, it is. I'm really behind here. <laughs> uh, where did it go? Well, I'll just talk. I saw somebody say something about tripod mode, and I'm not sure what they're referring to, but today I found something out about APAS. In tripod mode, APAS does not work when you're flying with your sticks, right? So APAS, for those of you who don't know, is how... The drone uses its sensors to, to go around obstacles instead of just sensing them and stopping. So if you have it in normal mode, you, you know, your little slider on the controller, and you're flying it with your sticks, it will actually go around as you're flying it and miss objects to some degree. It doesn't have side sensors, and I don't trust the back one very much. Mm. Um, but it will fly through. And I have a clip of that I can share later. But, but um, if you put it in normal mode and you go forward at a tree it will then go around it uh if it's in sports or not sports mode i didn't sports mode obviously there's no sensors it would just crash right into the tree and at um um tripod mode it just stops so the sensors just make it stop found that out today okay that's that's strange because uh, you would assume it has pretty much <laughs> has a ton of time to calculate a way around the uh, you would think in tripod mode it would stay on but nope it, i tried again and again and i was like sitting there because you had sent me that list of questions going, hmm, let's see what happens when I'm flying it with the sticks. And I pointed it right at the tree and it just kept stopping, stopping. And then I realized, oh yeah, I'm in tripod mode because I'm flying in a very small condensed patch of trees following snowboarders. And I didn't you know, want to accidentally into a tree and it just wouldn't go by them. And then I switched it into normal mode and then it would start going by them a little bit. But hmm. it's hard when you're in a patch of trees to trust this drone to not hit anything because it has no side sensors and it easily could have run into things a couple of times today. So uh, I, I, I'm working on a video showing how the Skydio worked in the trees versus this. And I don't want to give away too much, but I'm telling you, one made you feel very confident and you could fly it however you wanted. You could track people like anything. And the other one, let's just say your butt, butt's clenched up just a little bit. And you guys <laughs> can guess in the comments which one was which. Uh, let me yeah. uh, see what else we got here in the comments. I'm getting behind. Um, Ray says, that's why I always give tech six months or to allow for firmware updates and product tweaks, which is not a bad idea. But Ray, whenever we're doing these video channels like we do for this stuff, we get to take the um, the early ones and work out all the bugs for you guys. Oh, oh, Rick says that is where you lost your one wheeler or your uh, your wheel. Is that where you lost your, your wheel that time? No, it's actually not. It's uh, it's it's the opposite direction of where I live. Okay. <laughs> but that's also a beautiful castle up there. That's uh, true. I'm very blessed with all that, the castles around me. That was always an interesting story when you lost your, your wheel. Um, no, I was and, an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but for those who don't know, tech drone media used to actually be called um, drones and electric unicycles. And Correct. Henrik is a big um, fan of the uh, unicycles and they're, they're e-powered similar to the electric skateboards. And that's one of the things him and I actually connected about is because we're both into electric transportation, like skateboards and one wheels and drill. And I, borrow, I have a clip, actually. Yeah, go can, ahead and play it. So we can me, run so yeah. we can see what it's all about. Uh, let, 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 let me just find out how to do that. And that's uh, at the same time a test of active track. So, uh, yeah. While, you do it, while you're finding out, I'm going to go through the comments here real quick. So. There we go. Uh, I gotta admit, the stream yard is such an easy layout. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very easy. Okay, so let's play this one. So it's just so what 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 this basically is is a, a one wheel a electric unicycle, and it's it's a big uh, motor that's inside the hub, and that then there's some electronics uh, as well as some big batteries. This one is capable of riding, uh, I think, 60 miles on a charge, on a single charge. Did you say 60? Yes, and it can ride up to 40 miles per hour. That is impressive. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a powerhouse of a, a machine. I'm going to let you keep talking about how the active track works for you right here. I'm going to yeah, mute so, my mic so for there a second. It, there it goes very nicely, and it follows very, very nicely, and. Uh, 
but it's still uh, to some degree very unpredictable. And then I do the test that we always do. I put it in front of me, try to position it because that's the weak point of uh, the active track for DJI drones. And again, it's um, it's it's lagging a bit, so so it basically drop off to the side, even though I position it in the front, so it will just find its way behind me. And that's the same issue that I'm having with mine too. Yeah, you can't position it uh, like lock it in front of you. No, so I won't say. Uh, but but I, I think it's doing a pretty. Uh, I, I can use footage like this, but it's not very predictable. It's it's not like it's like I put it in the air somewhere and then it does something and you yeah. said you had had problems uh, with with yeah. the almost hitting you. I did. Uh, and that's actually the opener of the next video that I'm editing right now. Is I'm actually walking and I have it positioned to be in front of me, yeah. and it decided it wanted to be behind me and it goes and I'm like last second just out of the way. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah. Let me share this uh, clip. Let me see if I can share a clip real quick. Um, here we go. Okay. Is that working? Okay. I'm going to make it full screen. And this is just something the other day. I went out and I'm just tooling around by the lake because this kind of shot right here, I absolutely love these low lane. Like a lot of people don't like flying over water, but I love it because of stuff like this shot right here. And this is the Mavic Air 2. I'm probably like three feet above the water, right? <laughs> Maybe five tops. But look at that. I love shots like that. That's beautiful. This uh, kind of. And then, of course, you would edit out all this movement. So a lot of people that fly into drone channels, they'll leave all this stuff in. And I tell them, hey, it's okay to chop up your video and, yeah. and not leave it all in. Let me see. I, I think that was, that was pretty much it. Just this one little quick fly over here. And people are doing their drone videos way too long. Yeah, way I agree with too that. Long. Then you too get okay, you get like eight minutes of a, of a field somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's never gonna fly. I mean, you have to. Um, in my opinion, you, you really have to break it up. Maybe a minute worth of flight, two minutes worth of flight tops. Yeah. Um, cause I, you know, and I can prove this cause I have, you know, I can see all the analytics not long ago. I put out a really nice eight, 10 minute long drone video and it's just gorgeous drone footage. And within two minutes, everybody stops watching it. And yes. every minute of that footage was just as gorgeous as the first two minutes, but I don't talk in it. I don't do anything. It's just straight yeah. relaxing music with drone footage. I think it has a lot to do with the, with the, so if I found if you can extend it, if you mix in ground footage. And you're yeah. trying to build some sort of a story around it. Oh to yeah, keep people uh, hooked, but it is difficult. It's very, very difficult to All keep right. the retention. Uh, just let me go through the chat. We're really behind on the chat, so let's take a minute and catch up on the chat questions yes. before we show the next uh, clips and talk about Active Track a little more because I really want to show some of the clips from Active Track today. Um, it looks like they're talking about some of them are already having bulges in their batteries. Um, if Ken from Ooh. the Dobo has already got in his brand new one. That's crazy. I do not. Mine are totally fine. And I actually on my Mavic Zoom and my original Mavic Air, all my batteries are so fine. I've not had any bulgy batteries. I, my bulges are other places. <laughs> 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 all right. So that was a horrible joke right there. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, what do we got? Air to do it. Says uh, Coast to Coast love my Mavic and my Scotty was having issues. Oh no. Took 1.0 hours to fl upload flight data from one flight. That's crazy. Um, your SD card might be having the issues because if you put your SD card in and it took an hour and a half, I think that might be an SD card issue more. So try a new SD card first before we're thinking it's the Skydio. And obviously if the next SD card does the same thing, contact Skydio and they'll get you a replacement, I'm sure. I flew my Skydio today and it was so much fun. If I've said it a million times. If the Skydio had a controller with a signal, even even as good as OcuSync One or Lightbridge, it would be unbeatable. That thing would be so amazing. But because of the signal and the Wi-Fi that it uses, you flying in trees and doing stuff 500 feet away, you're seeing break up. All right, back to the chat. But at uh, least it can take care of itself. Yes, it can. Can. You don't need to worry about it when it's uh, it's out there unless you put it in the hands of Ken Heron. 
<laughs> oh, he was so cruel to that sky deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, people are definitely hitting wires. I almost hit a wire with mine. And ah, that's also a tough one. I it's going to, I think it's going to be a little while still before we get a drone that can not hit wires. Um, that video of the water that wasn't HDR. Um, I actually have a bunch of videos that I'm gonna I could share that are HDR that will show. It really makes the sky sort of pop. Um, let's, oh, Steve Carpenter's in with us. He says hello to you too, Henrik. Hey. Um, let's see. Let me see. I totally lost track of uh, of the chat. I <laughs> hope. Oh, this is. Yeah, no, I'm trying to get caught up. I know we're pretty behind. Mel has a good thing. If you're in Michigan and you fly on the river and cross over to Canadian side, hashtag super busted. That's interesting to know. I did not know that. You can't. You, you can't cross borders with your drone. That's for I, sure. I guess not. Maybe. Maybe they're afraid <laughs> you're like gonna have a bomb on your drone or something. I don't know. Like you could have maybe uh, maybe. Uh, and you shouldn't uh, laugh about that because the first time I flew around this castle, there was actually a security guard approaching me and asking me uh, if my permission, uh, asking for my permission. And really? That was because they was uh, they were extra careful about the people flying drones up there uh, because they had a suspicion about uh, maybe they could be used for some sort of a terror attack. Huh. Yeah, here's a. Uh... Kai says Henrik he'll come over and visit and he'll he'll cross over to Sweden for you and make the video. <laughs> he'll take one for the video. Uh, You're gonna do that. Smash that like button. I appreciate that, Steve. What where are we at? I'm trying to get caught up. Yeah, here smack that like button. That helps a lot. So okay, yeah. Any interaction in the chat, smacking the like buttons, all that smack the dislike button. All of it helps the channel. It's it really does. Twice. Yeah, twice. <laughs> <laughs> this like button twice. Uh, yeah, am I missing any questions? A lot of happy Memorial Days from everybody, which is great. I hope everybody's having a good time. Um, oh, oh, oh! I don't know what's going on here, but this makes me not not feel good here. Rick, uh, Steve Carpenter says, "I pray you get better very soon." Um, so I'm assuming Rick is having some health issues, and uh, our heart goes out to you, Rick. You've been a big supporter of the channel for a long time. I think you're a supporter of a lot of the channels. Yes. And whatever you're going through, we we definitely hope uh, it's not painful and that you are uh, on the healthy side as soon as possible. Absolutely. Second that. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, oh, it just jumped. I'm trying to catch up, and sometimes it pops up whenever somebody else types. Oh, man, I was really behind here. <laughs> okay, so David says they are moving slowly in tripod mode and should be under control, so APAS only works in program mode. Huh. So that's their their reasoning for that. That's um, that's interesting. Okay, it seems like it's just them being lazy with their software to me. But whatever. But but the good thing about DJI is that they uh, always uh, deliver stuff uh, later. You could also argue it's a bad thing that we are going to be test pilots uh, as early adapters. But they, but they are releasing stuff. They it's not just sell and forget. So, yeah. so in, in, in that point, it's good. And they, if they enough do. are requesting this, uh, uh, that's also why I keep making these uh, videos about the negative sides of, uh, of the drone, because um, they might see them or they might not. But if enough makes videos pointing out stuff, I'm pretty sure they will incorporate it eventually, if it's within what's possible. Yeah. And that, that is a good thing about DJI, is that they do update their stuff. They don't just put it out and like, maybe once a year put out stuff. They're constantly updating. And sometimes that's good and sometimes it's bad. With the original Mavic, you might remember, there was quite a few updates that sometimes pissed people off because it changed things in a way. It took away color profiles that we were using and all kinds of other stuff. Um, Matthias says he thinks it happened to Henrik as well where he starts the hyperlapse and it goes about his thing for a few seconds and then just aborts the hyperlapse. Yes. Is that it? Did. Is that, it did. Yes, you have a few uh, quick shots just in the middle of it stop? Yeah, stop. Hmm. Uh, you figure out why, or just no clue. Nope. Did it, but it as, as I said, I was a bit under pressure. <laughs> yeah, I had to record the video for the channel, so uh, so I hadn't, uh, I didn't have much time for uh, for forensics uh, directly I, on the beach. I personally haven't done a whole lot of the automated stuff yet with it. I've done a lot with the active track because 
for all the things I do. But but you know, for actually, uh, the spotlight feature. Have you tried that? A spotlight feature. Yeah, it's the it's the eye, the opposite of the action oh, yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. fly you, it manually. You can, you know, you can lock it onto you while you are riding your electric skateboard, and then you can actually fly it, and it will keep you in focus. Yeah, I so I did a little testing on that, but I'm walking um, with the electric skateboard. It's a little hard because you have to have a uh, controller here, so to control it yourself. But today I went out and I did that a little bit with snowboarding. I tracked somebody else. Uh, selected them and then flew it manually around them as it stayed there and that was a pretty cool feature except when you're in trees you don't have much room and hmm. to do that it, without those side sensors you're, you're taking some chances when you're i'll show you a clip shortly of those trees and how how the whole thing was but yeah it's a, i actually found that out i was messing around with it with an old drone a while ago i was planning on making a video and never did as one of my favorite features was to select someone and then just manually fly it all crazy and it would keep them in the center the whole time which i think is a pretty cool thing and that works for more than just people you can use that on a house mm -hmm. or whatever yeah um chayas asked me the mavic air 2 feels different than the air 1 in a good way or bad way um it depends so i'll, I'll make a specific video about this later because i i'm not saying that the mavic air 2 is bad it's not it's a great drone it's cheaper than some of the more expensive ones. But if you have a Zoom or a Mavic 2 Pro already and the Mavic Air 1 already, it's sort of a little of both. It's missing a lot of features that make the Mavic Air 1 an Air. It, it really is. And it's got a few of the features of the Mavic 2 Pro or the Mavic Zoom, but it's missing some of those features too. So if you don't have either the Mavic Air 1 or the Zoom or the Pro, it's a great it's a great price point for what you get and the controller oh my i wish i could hook that controller up to my other drones i really do mm -hmm. um i so, would say if i was a new person entering the hobby if i had the money i would buy the mavic into without yeah. any doubt if it's your first drone i think it'd be a great first drone it's it's slam packed with with features i know you're saying it's missing some but it has some really really good stuff in there that will get you started. Yeah, so the features, I and mean, I'm gonna make a standalone video later about this, that a lot of people don't use, I guess, on the Mavic Air 1, mm. is you can actually control it completely with your hand or completely with your phone. So if you're yeah, using that's, it- that, 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 that part is not, uh, it's not there. No, it's. I don't know why they didn't do that. Um, I don't know if it's because it's bigger and it won't really fit in your pocket, but I mean, if you're using your phone and in the other pocket, you've got the Mavic Air, and you're going out to get some some active track of yourself or someone else. That's all yeah. you need. Your phone and that, and you're done. You're good. And it's got APAS. It's got the original APAS, so it can go around some basic things. Um, that's a feature on the Mavic Air 1 that everybody seems to have forgotten. Yeah. I didn't use it at all, so so I, I'm not missing it at all. Yeah. Yeah, for so, me, for me, the most important stuff is the connection. I was so pissed on my original Mavic Air. Yeah. Because of, of especially in that area you just saw there, I couldn't, I could barely get really you know, two hundred feet out oh, before that's the cool. signal started. I couldn't do a pan. That was impossible. Yeah. Because it was breaking up. But also, with that said, uh, the broadcasting power is only one sixth uh, in my drone than it is uh, compared to yours. Really? Because yours, yours are the FCC model. Oh, on the on the original Air. Yeah, yeah, on the original yeah. Air. But I, the same did, goes for for the new one. It's also reduced in power in Europe. Really? Did you see yeah. how far that I was able to get both of those drones out the other day? I did the Mavic Air One and the Mavic Air Two yeah. distance test, and the Mavic Air Two got like twelve thousand feet, and I had no breakup. Yeah, um, that's that's uh, that's amazing. And the, but what was amazing to me was <laughs> that the Mavic Air One got like nine thousand feet before yeah. it started breaking up. I've never gone that far with that drone. And realistically, we shouldn't be going that far anyways. No, I, I don't care. I, I don't care about these distances. I don't use yeah. it. I don't like it uh, being out that far. But yeah. I want a solid connection that I can trust. So uh, so uh, I don't need to worry about the... And honestly, the uh, connection test that you see, for those of you watching, when we do these distance tests, for most of us, it's not about the distance. It's exactly what Henrik said. It's just a way for us to test the connection strength. The only other way to really do that would be to stay low and fly behind buildings or fly through some trees where that's interfering with your signal. So um, 
to show if it connects or not. Like for example, today I was flying through trees with the Mavic Air 2, solid connection. Flying through trees with the uh, Skydio, 500 feet away, I'm seeing a little bit of breakup. Um, yeah. So, but you know, how often do you guys in the comments fly through trees? I do it quite often, especially with the Skydio. It's a lot of fun to fly backwards through trees. It's, it's amazing because it's like you've seen those videos of those guys who fly backwards through everything yeah. and then it reveals everything. You could do that with the Skydio, just turn backwards and go. It's crazy. Uh, Steve says the uh, TP shirts has him laughing. He can't. Oh, that's cool. Steve ordered some of my I Survive shirts, and it's a I don't have one on me. Um, <laughs> it, it's it's a roll of toilet paper that says I survived the crisis of 2020 or something like that. Because <laughs> for some reason, toilet paper was a, like a hot commodity. It was. <laughs> we have we have some we have a, like a, something like Craigslist in Denmark. Yeah, uh, like an, a, a service where they sell stuff, and there were people on there that were selling this for <laughs> like thousands of dollars for, oh for to rolls of toilet paper. It was, <laughs> and it's crazy because it wasn't just here in America; it was a no, worldwide was toilet paper shortage. It was so bizarre. I mean, there's people right now that probably have a whole room full of toilet paper, and they don't ever have to buy toilet paper the rest. There of was the a guy, was it in Australia, right, that, that has bought like the biggest stash that you could ever imagine, and then he tried to return it to the store, and they refused to take oh, it. Good. So. <laughs> they didn't take it back. I heard something like that happening with a bunch of hand sanitizers too. Yeah. Then they started to do something in Denmark that uh, you could buy the first bottle, you could buy that for maybe, I don't know, $10. And then the next one, that would be like $500. So yeah. you could, that, that was a way for sort of limiting that. <laughs> so it didn't get out of hand. Uh, Coast to Coast Drones says, which air do we prefer? And honestly, they're so different in my opinion. And they're, I would use each one completely for different use. Um, if the original air had the same OcuSync connection and maybe the controller that comes with this one, I would dump the, I, I don't even care that the battery life is shorter. I would, I would still use that one over the Mavic Air 2. Um, however, the controller for the Mavic Air 2 and the battery life and the signal strength, I like it for, for really nice big panning shots where I know that, um, that the controller signal is going to stay strong. Um, Am I going to keep the Air 2 or Air 1? Not sure yet. One of them I might get rid of, and I might end up keeping them both. I'm sort of a pack rat with my drone, so it's really hard for me to sell them. I have an Evo I've been, I haven't been, flown in probably almost a year. <laughs> it's just sitting there, and I need to sell it. And every time I'm about to sell it, I'm like, ah, no, 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 I might keep it. You would never sell your drones, Sean. <laughs> just, 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 you get to terms with it. You would never sell them. I sell all of mine. Then, yeah, uh, I know you sell them right off the bat. Yeah, and, and just so you guys know, if I'm missing a comment from you in the chat, I apologize. Uh, the best way for me to see a comment is either to um, just write it a few times here and there, and hopefully I'll catch it. And if otherwise, or, or do a super chat. <laughs> yeah, I always, I mean, you see the super chat because they come up all highlighted and big. It's hard to, hard to not do those. But uh, yeah, so I am scrolling the comments, I'm trying to get caught up. Um, I know I'm a little, uh, the conversation's a little different what I'm reading in the chats than where we actually are. Um, Just let me scroll with you. Yeah, if you see one, feel free to help me answer them. Um, yeah. Oh, da, 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 snow in the mountain was dope. Okay. You know what, let me, actually, let's get caught up in the chats. I'm about to go through a damn video. Oh, here we go. This is a good question. Did the sensors mess you up when flying so close to reflective water? No. The sensors did not pick up anything. Everything flew smoothly. I actually have a few clips of me flying around that water. Um, I had no problem. Um, I was in motion. I never hovered that high. I would think that if you were going to have an issue, hovering could be more of an issue. I actually was in regular mode and not even in um, sports mode. So that shot would probably be even cooler if it was in sports mode because it would be even faster. Because that, so many people are worried about slowing footage down. I find myself speeding drone footage up a lot because mm. I am trying to cram a lot of stuff into a one or two minute clip. And I want 
the reveal to come. So if I put it in 60 and slowed it down to 30, now that one clip of a reveal could take two minutes all on its own. Yeah. But if I true. speed it up a little bit at double time and it's smooth, then then you get a great shot. And I, I figured that out years ago when we first met, met Henrik and I had that um, the blade chroma and I had the what I called the the chroma drift. And the thing couldn't hover. It would just sort of like this all the time. So when you fly straight and you wanted to get a cool shot, it still did this the whole <laughs> way up. And you couldn't tell if you did it in regular speed. But if you double speed it or, or something else, then your shot was like all crazy. Mm -hmm. So the, the fact that DJI has made these things so smooth and so stable when they're they're actually moving forward is huge. It's huge. They're actually being thrown a lot around when it's windy, and it's uh, still amazing that the footage come out uh, as yeah. stable as it does. I agree. It's, uh, especially the mini that's being <laughs> beaten around when it's uh, just uh, just a little bit of wind. You know, I'm actually still debating getting the mini. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the mini is uh, is good for for making content. But it's it's I still as I did mentioned in one of my videos I don't think it's a very good beginner drone. No, you know, oh, because of the lack of sensors or yeah, maybe not. But it's 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 very wind sensitive and it's a again the European model is really a disaster in terms of connectivity. So it's a, it's not stuff that you want to experience when you are learning uh, this. It's that you you stand in the middle of nowhere and suddenly your drone drifts away because of high wind. And then when it gets to a certain point, you lose connection. Yeah. So so it's a, um, I don't know. It's a, but of okay. course it has a really fantastic price point. You get a lot of uh, drone in the mini for the money. So so if money is an issue, it, it's it's definitely a, a way to start to get into the hobby. But yeah. Uh, but Thomas says here that he, he has a zoom. So he was expecting the air to be a little smaller. Uh, the Mavic Mini didn't get OcuSync, so he bought a Jeep XJ instead, <laughs> which sounds like a good purchase. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'll be sending my Mavic Air 2 to replace the broken leg. Um, didn't buy DJI Care when you bought it. You'll have to share with us in the chat, Little Mountain Life, what you did, if you hit something or if it broke in travel or what you did. Uh, that's actually something I can tell you, too, that the body style and plastic of the original Mavic Mini or not mini, I'm sorry, the Mavic Air actually feels more solid, uh, like a different, harder plastic than what's used on the Mavic Air 2. The mm. Mavic Air 2, if you tap on the top of it compared to, say, the Mavic Zoom, it feels very similar. It's a, I don't want to say a softer plastic or cheaper, it doesn't compare it next to each other. It's a little more toy feeling, but not in a bad way, if that makes sense. It's, it's not a bad thing, it just feels different, not as hard or rigid to me. The plastic seems to have more give. Yeah, yeah, um, it does feel a bit, a little bit more cheap. It was like a, a very this very tight bulldog style. The yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. It it really was. It was a solid little brick. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, just, sorry, I'm scrolling through the comments still, guys. I'm almost caught up. I think, and like I said, if there's something I missed, just either say it a few times in a row so I can see it, um, or Bob Casey just joined us. I see that. Um, Robert says, Sean and Henrik, all the way from which one do we prefer, the Mavic Air 2 or the Mavic Zoom? Uh, I'm going to be doing a standalone video with all three of those, Robert. So please subscribe to the channel and uh, click the bell notification so you see that. I'm not making a final decision on that until I've done the rest of these side-by-side -side tests. I want to really put this thing to the test. I don't just want to tell you my first thoughts on which one's my favorite, although I have hinted around. It, you know, if money was not an object, then obviously I, I would probably stick with my Zoom because that Zoom feature for me up in the nature in the mountains is like that castle you were just flying around. If you had the Zoom, the shot you yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, could, I could definitely use the Zoom at some point. I I kind of hope that the, the Mavic 3 will, uh, will be a one-inch sensor with a much more powerful processor yeah. and uh, Zoom capabilities. And maybe some uh, some upgraded sensor system. Oh, the Mavic 3 has an upgraded sensor system. If it has the zoom, if it has a one-inch sensor, I'll spend money again. But Take I, my money, DJI. <laughs> I will not spend money, though, if it just has um, the same features. I mean, like, 
I, I'm at a point where I'm buying the same damn product again and again, and there's really nothing that different. Honestly, I, I was a little uh, disappointed with the video capabilities of the Mavic uh, 2 Pro. Uh, yeah. When I originally got it, I think it's it's a bit soft and uh, it's it's not as as good as uh, as advertised. And I was also a little bit pissed that I couldn't buy the Zoom module and just plug it in. I know you can do it. Yeah, but it's not easy. It's like it's not easy. It's not like a plug and play operation. Right. I wish they they have made it like that so I could just buy this extra camera module because then I would have bought it. And I probably would have bought one of the Mavic 2s if it was just a slide because the all if you like the Mavic uh, or not the Mavic I'm sorry but the uh, Blade Chroma that drawn I had the camera slid right off slide it right back on you could put different cameras yeah. on it. Uh, Alan says he's loving the chat he's from Ireland. Oh that's dope. He's going to buy the Mavic Air 2 soon. So it's it's a great flying drone. Again Alan I'll say this again and again. I am so damn impressed with the controller. And and Henrik, you probably heard me before this was released. Uh, the controller was my biggest weak point, and now it is the strongest thing about this particular drone. You had a whole bunch of complaints. I did it. <laughs> I, I was I was I was mad hating on the controller, and now I'm like, <laughs> oh, the controller is awesome. <laughs> uh. I was actually wondering, is there a way of doing a poll or something here with doing this a, system? Doing a what? A poll? Like a like a vote for something? Oh, a poll. Yeah, poll, 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 poll. I don't know. Maybe a poll, P-O-L-L, poll. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we always have this discussion, this uh, between you and I uh, recording yes. 4K versus 1080p. Oh, yeah. It would be nice to hear uh, what people well, actually we, we just ask them. I, I bet most people will go to 4K because it is higher in CRISPR. Yeah. I do almost everything, not always, almost everything in 1080. And the reason why, for Henrik has his say, let me say the reason why is because I save all my footage and I do most everything for YouTube. It's in 80% of the people who view my channel view it on a phone or a tablet or a laptop. And 4K on some laptops makes a difference. Uh, some of the newer ones definitely. But 1080 plays smooth, looks smooth. If you got a slower broadband, it's smooth. And for me, it means I have to buy less hard drives to save my my files. Your argument. Your argument. <laughs> for me, space is not an issue. And I actually think it looks better, uh, at least from the Mavic 2 uh, Pro. The output that you get from the 4K when you downscale it to, to 1080p than uh, just the native uh, 1080p out of the drone. But it takes so much longer to work with. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and you know when I realized that, uh -huh. you know you know I have been visiting my parents uh, a lot due yeah. to some family and related. They have a uh, slow internet connection. They have the slowest <laughs> internet connection in the world. So it's a uh, when when I do this one of these like ten minutes videos, it's one point six gigabyte. It takes around eight to ten hours to upload it to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that would take maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, that's that's a big difference. But when you have the speed and you have the the storage for it, then it's a, it's there's no reason not to shoot. No, oh, no, 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 the, no, you cannot say no, 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 I interrupt. <laughs> you cannot say there's no reason. There's no reasons. That's an opinion. <laughs> It's not a blanket statement. No, 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 no that's reason. my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have your reasons. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, because for me, I, I still, I, I could have the storage. I do. I have four hard drives sitting there blank waiting to go, but hmm. uh, I still do 1080. I just, it's just so much faster. The editing is smoother. The time is faster. I probably should use proxies, but I, I always just dump all my footage in and edit right off the hard drives. But, um, the, you know, it's the rendering speed, the upload speed, and the fact that 80% of the people watch on a 1080 device anyways. I, yeah, I don't care if your phone can pump out 4K. Um, yeah, yeah. It's too case, small. It's, a, it's, it's, it's useless. That's true. All right. Let's get back to showing some footage. We got a little sidetracked there, guys. So if you're watching this on the replay, like I said, there was going to be some chit-chatting and then some, some footage and some chit-chatting. Let me see if I can find this footage from today uh, this is going to be a new video i'm working on the mavic air 2 versus the skydio 2 
and awesome. it's going to take me a minute to find it. So if you have something ready to play, Henrik, and you want to talk about it, I'll look for some um, some stuff to show everyone. Yeah, I'm, I might have something. I have a slow motion clip. Oh, oh, I have to bring this up real quick. Look what Sunrise Water Media said. When's y'all's next collab with wigs on? <laughs> we can make that today. <laughs> I don't have a wig. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm, running low, I'm running low on my wig storage. <laughs> I just happen to have one in the back. It's just, don't we all? <laughs> it's like the old drunken horizon guy. You know, when I'm in the bushes hiding and spying on people. I've uh, got a lot of view that video. Yeah, uh, I think it's almost up to 800,000 views now. Let's see if I can brighten this up a little bit. Oh, this is nice. Robert says he subscribed to both of us. He's been subscribed to me for a couple of years. Can't wait for that review. I appreciate that, Robert. Man, everybody who subscribes, I, I you know, I can't say it enough, you know. I enjoy making videos. I really enjoy making them. And a lot of the times I'll make stuff that has nothing to do with the drones and the other stuff just because I really want to either practice storytelling or just, just because. And the ones of you that go and watch those and not just the drone stuff, I really appreciate that 100% through. Thank you so much, everyone that supports my channel and Henrik's channel, Tech Drone Media, because we both sort of started out around the same time. Henrik and I were around the same amount of subscribers and watching our channels grow separately. He kept his stuff very niche related and my stuff went all over the place from snowboarding to drones to snowboarding to tri family trips to snowboarding back to drones to GoPros and it grows. But because of that, it grows a lot slower. I, I can confirm that because I had a detour at some point where I was doing a lot of action camera stuff, uh, GoPros, uh, Osmo Pocket and stuff like that, and that completely halted the, the channel. It's just lately here I, I've started to grow it again. But but that that's one of the reasons why we are doing this, Sean, is to see the growth of the channel and to build the community. And it's really nice to see when it starts to happen again. Yep. You start to see that activity going on below the videos and, and stuff like that. That that's what at least what that's what keeps me going. And wants to make more videos uh, is the interaction with the, with people watching uh, the content that we put out. Yeah, you know, some of my favorite videos are my vlog videos, though, um, because the stuff that's a review of a product, it's for me at least, it's a limited time that I can look back at that. And go, oh, that was cool. But like, I'm editing some video from last year. At this time, we all went on spring break trips, and this year we were not able to go at all because of the whole you know thing that happened to the whole world. Um, and I think I'm going to edit them anyways and put them up and they'll probably get barely any views and it'll probably hurt my growth again. But for me, five years from now, 10 years from now, looking back, those are the videos I'll go watch. Yeah. Those are the ones that will, will still hit me here in the heart where yeah. my Air 2 videos, I'll be like, I'm on the Air 20 now. <laughs> the Air 2. Yeah, that, that's also why I find joy in doing the new style that I've been introducing on the channel where I simply go and fly. You just test out the stuff while I'm talking to the camera. It's a, it's a, it's. Then it's not just a review. It's also showing how the stuff works in real life, combined with showing some places that the, a lot of the audience haven't seen before. So it's yeah. a, it's a. I think it's it's nice, and I think I will continue doing that. And I'll tell you, I, I've actually been doing some of those too. And what I liked about them, especially during this whole uh, pandemic thing is it was done in a way as if the people watching were sitting on the on the side with me and we're all just hanging out, um, which makes it cool for doing a premiere because then the chat room comes up and we can hang out and talk. And then hopefully people who watch it in the replay feel like we're all just hanging out. I don't know if you, you saw the one where I did the noise uh, comparison. Um, I would normally have trimmed that down maybe to, I don't know, a one – Two thirds of the size. Yeah. But uh, there was this 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 family that was approaching with kids coming in and all that stuff that wanted, that actually watched me record the video, and I thought, yeah, why not include that? That's part of uh, that was part of the story. Yeah. And then I, I think I get get good response on, on including stuff like that instead of just trimming it down to the bare basics. 
you know, I wonder if I could share this. I just had some kids follow me. I walked way far away from all the people. And all of a sudden these kids follow me because they see me filming and everything. Um, they didn't ask to be in the video or anything, but I, I guarantee you that's why they were following. Yes. Try something <laughs> right now. Um, this might work and it might not work. Let me see. Oh, it actually works. Look at this. Look at this. There's my Final Cut Pro. Can you see it? Yes. Ha, huh, this is pretty dope. I didn't know this would work. So we, let me we, scroll we, back. You can do live edits now. Yeah. So I don't know if this is going to have a delay, but let me just let it play and let's see this opening scene here. You can see where it almost hits me in the face. <laughs> that was close. Yeah. It didn't have audio though, did it? There's no audio just then. Oh, there's no audio. No. So that's the problem. So if I was to share something and we were to do this on this live, the audio from this screen would not play. So hopefully that's something that uh, they're going to fix in a future update with StreamYard because that would be really dope. But yeah, did you see how close that was? <laughs> Almost right in the face right there. <laughs> Let me play that one more time. I'm just, uh, I'm just walking and <laughs> just right in the face, man. If I wasn't paying attention, that could have been a bad day. <laughs> Uh, Jenna has a question to me if I ever have been visiting Malta. I actually have been there two times. One time uh, when I was a kid with my parents and uh, then later on with my own family. It's a, it's a nice place south of uh, Italy. Nice. It's uh, like an island in the middle of uh, you take Europe and you take Africa, then in the middle and you put a dot in that and that's Malta. Nice. Did you uh, have a video you have ready to play? Me? Yep. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm doing? <laughs> because you're I'm going to share a secret right now. Every video that you've been playing, I've been muting my mic and eating my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm hungry. Let's keep asking you to play videos. Let's, uh, let's, do, let's, do, let's do one here. Let's do this one. Okay, let's see. So we'll pop so that up there. I'm, okay. demo I'm demoing my athletic skills here in slow motion across the field. Time yeah, eight. slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> like a bionic man. <laughs> that was before I got attacked by the Birdman. I think it was when he saw that he said that. And now it's enough. Now it's just to show you the picture quality. Is it full screen? No, now it's full screen, I guess. This is another one using the then the drone for a different kind of purpose to film the basketball. I have more clips of that stuff so, <laughs> so that I could edit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What, what was that uh, in the 120? Uh, yes, no, I think that was uh, one uh, 240. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And I, I actually did uh, multiple clips. I also to, uh, took one that is uh, above the the basket. And uh, one that shows it's my son that's throwing. So I have it. Uh, I have all the angles, so I could put some, uh, put a really nice clip together. Nice. And when is that one coming out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually amazing. I had the drone for like three days, and I produced so much content that you can't believe it. I made like I don't know eight, eight videos on top of it, and I can may probably produce three more, three to four more. Videos based on the Mavic Air 2. So and, I, uh, and of course, for people that are wondering if if I would actually buy it, I'm not sure that I would because I have a Mavic 2 Pro as it is right now. This is uh, this is from Tim. <laughs> I didn't notice he did that. Um, so hopefully the footage is somewhat smooth on this because it, it's the way I'm having to play it. It's weird. Normally you drag uh, a file into the browser window and it plays and can play audio. However, it looks like it's lagging a bit on this. So yeah, it's lagging for everyone, let me know. Yeah. But for some reason, it's not letting me with the air drag the footage directly to my browser, which is really, let me try again here, guys, because that lag sort of sucks. Um, I know why it's not letting you do that, I think. You do know? Yeah, I, th I could expect it's because it's H265. Oh, yeah. Let me show you what, what it shows. This is what's happening when I try to share it. Um, 
Chrome tab. This is what it looks like. H two six five is really tough. It doesn't want to. Um, I might switch that then because, again, this is sort of like the four K ten eighty debate. Yeah. Higher resolution, higher things cause issues. Not always. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but the H two six five that was developed to offer better compression uh, for four K footage. Yeah, but if it's causing this, like I can't share it easily. Only after I've edited it and then changed it to normal stuff. That's sort How of. You should just switch it into two six uh, four. Do I could do that on the drone. Yeah, I think I might have to do that. Yeah, um, and then it will be compatible again. But that sucks for today because I I can try to show you this clip. It'd be a little little choppy, but. Um, or you could, we could do the slow motion again. And then you could just put it in the timeline and then export it. Really, I don't know how fast it takes uh, to export it. Um, you mean like save it again as a different? Oh wait, that might work. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah just export it uh, through uh, the Final Cut. Um, well, just maybe even just open it in QuickTime and then. Um, yeah, QuickTime uh, might be. Uh, export, right there. We'll just call it. Um, test yeah i thought it was a cool clip to sunrise water media the the basketball shot okay and where did it save it crap <laughs> i don't really know how good it turns out before you really you watch it in post <laughs> i was also surprised how good it it turned out all right then we're gonna we're gonna see if this worked no now i drag it over to a file window and it's just saving it into my Download. <laughs> what is that about? Ah, okay. What I did with the clips, I just put them in Final Cut and then I exported them, so they I knew they could play in there. Yeah, that's what I've done before. I just like I, said, I was I was out on the mountain right to this very. Uh, let me just test it out here. Let me take a clip here. Let's see. I can at least. It's a short clip, but this is the active track trying to keep him in front. Did it show? Yeah. It's choppy. Okay, so it's choppy, but you can see like it immediately tries to go behind him instead. It doesn't stay in front of him at all. Like it doesn't go backwards. Mm -hmm. Same thing that happened with you on the unicycle. Yeah. Um, now I should be able to get the Skydio clip to work. This is interesting. This should work. Come on, work. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me just open this up so you guys can see the difference. Um. All right, so hopefully this isn't choppy. This should be a lot less choppy now. Yeah, yeah, that looks a lot better. All right, so basically, using the controller in my phone on the Skydio 2, you get a little plus signal, and you select who you want to select, and then you put it where you want it, whether it be the front, the side, whatever, and whenever he starts to go, the thing will just fall. Let me, just, let me rewind that. I went too far. And you'll see how it just keeps him in track. Here we go. He drops in, and this guy to readjust, puts itself there, keeps him in sight, and goes around to the side that I wanted it on, which was his left side. Because when we first start, it doesn't know what side it's on. And I did some manual flying today, too, so it's just everybody out there building features. We got a bunch of snow last night, which was sort of crazy. Um, let's fast forward it here, guys. That's me fast forwarding it. That's not the footage being jerky. There you go. So this is it from behind, and no problem. Now, from behind, I got to say that the air is very smooth. It tracks really well from behind. Yeah. On this short distance, like what we're doing here, not so much. Um, but um, it does well in a bigger open area. And this is sort of fun. You can just sort of manually, you can see me sitting there with the controller pointed at the trees. And this is similar to what APAS does except you can actually just fly through and let it do its thing, and it just finds its way right through. I think I might have got stuck on a tree at some point, but no, nope, guess not. Look at that. Just right around it. I really hope I get a chance to try this out at some point. Well, I still have one on order, so um, you got a chance to buy that one if you want. <laughs> we'll see. Or maybe I'll use that one and sell my old one as used. You're not selling your old ones. You know that. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I have to go back over to here. 
Let's see if I can find another clip of it tracking. I think I just missed one. Um, dim, dim, dim. But this thing, oh, so this is just flying through trees right here. I have no worry in the world that it's going to hit anything. Uh, that's uh, that's insane. Yep. I, I would not. This is obviously from where I'm at. I'm still close. I can hear it. But I can't see it because the trees are blocking it. But I would never trust it's, it's, most it's, of my drones to do that. Um, and even more so. I mean, this is just a beautiful area to go fly right here. Um, Hendrik, are you going to try to make it to the, the – are you going to be able to make it to the thing this year or you think you're going to have to wait another year? I don't know. I'm still considering. Because <laughs> it's more of a casual hangout. It's not like um, it's not like it was the years before. Um, let me see here. So what what will it be to this year? Uh, still uh, like a so spin up is uh. Let me just for those who are in the audience here who don't know what it is, Kelly from Ready Set Drone does um, spin up every year, which is a gathering of people into YouTube and into drones, and usually he has speakers that um, come up on stage and talk about their channels, talk about the drones, talk about things to come, people from the drone industry, and a lot of giveaways. Yeah. Um, this year, instead of doing it like that, because of the whole Rona thing, he's doing a free spin-up live, live broadcasted. Um, I'm going to actually be going to that in, um, in his studio there, and I'll be doing some kind I'm not sure exactly what we're doing yet, but I'm going to be going to, to be on his studio, so I'll be on it that way. And then – like a week or two later, we're having a meetup in person up here in Colorado um, by my house where everyone's just going to get together for the day and barbecue and fly. And that's about it. That that sounds uh, way more intriguing than going <laughs> to a public speaking event. Yeah, I'm, I mean, uh, I'm, we're working with a hotel. Hopefully, we're still making some contacts. There's some still some things. I want to, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to fast forward this. This is pretty cool what I do here. So, Here's flying through the trees again. I just check this out, Henrik. This is insane. Now I'm flying backwards through the trees. Like, I don't know where the drone. I can't see my drone, but look at it just go backwards. But, but you trees. know this drone is is made for unicycles. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's insane, man. Like, like on a on a mountain bike, a forest track. I yeah. know some people that I, I'm not as much a daredevil as they are. They are pretty daredevils when they ride inside these uh, mountain bike trails and these uh, one wheelers. It could be really fun to film that from no, a low angle. You, love it. you will love it. Look at this. Look at this, though. So I have it low to the ground, point the gimbal up. Now I just pull the stick backwards. Yeah. I, I just assume it's not going to hit anything. Yeah, but you have tried it before, so you have confidence that it won't. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It's, I mean, it's such a cool shot coming backwards through things like that. And, I mean, you can see where I was standing compared to where it was. I wasn't really that far from it. However, the trees were blocking my line of sight. And then just manually flying back through the tree. This thing is just amazing for tracking and just flying like this. But, yeah, so let me close that up. And did you have another um, – uh, shot from the Air 2 that you wanted to play. Mm, I have this uh, clip with the bird guy. That's uh, the last oh, thing. It's like Steve had to take off. All right, Steve, thank you so much for stopping in and hanging out with us. Um, I just confirmed, actually, that I cannot either drop in uh, Mavic Air 2 footage directly to uh, StreamYard. Oh, really? Well, that's a bummer. Like, to using it on the browser. Yeah. Yeah, because opening it in a in a file sort of sucks. Um, let me see if I can find another one. Let's see if I can find another workaround. Here we go. Um, maybe if I go under share screen. Sorry, guys, I was not a little a little unprepared for this part of it. We'll just share my entire screen, I guess. <laughs> see if that works. Oh, okay. Can you guys see this? Does that work? Yes. Is it is it Staticky, or is it working? A little bit. Skipping around a little? A little bit. Dang it, man. It must be that new format. Yeah, I'll have to switch that. So here's, I think I'm manually flying this to track them now. Yeah. So in this small little opening you see here, it's really the Mavic Air isn't the drone for you if you want to do tracking of this kind of stuff. 
Now, if you are wanting to manually fly it higher up in longer distances, then I think the Mavic Air 2 is amazing. And, and the fact that it has a good active track from behind is a plus. It's not, it's obviously a plus, but if you're wanting it mainly for active track features to follow you doing things, um, I, I don't think I'd recommend it for that feature alone. Mainly because you can't really keep it in front of you. That's me actually flying it. That wasn't actually it doing active track. Mm. Just so you, in case. So let's see. Let me, oh, that is really weird. Let me just, how do I stop this? Okay, there we go. That was like, whoo, just kept going, the screen. That was behind the scenes. Yeah. All right, guys. So let me ask in the chat here because the chat seems to have slowed down. We still have a few people here hanging out with us. Any questions that you guys want us to answer about the Mavic Air 2? And it's going to take a second for them to actually hear that and then respond. And while it is, I'm going to see if I can find another clip. I just, the bummer is that most of these are having a bit of um, delay or static when I fly them. So that sort of sucks. Mm hmm. All right, so we got something here. This might actually work. Uh, well, Katie, he was taking he was taking good care of you and asking me to play the clip so you could get something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is this is, this might work. Let me let me see. This is a um, a screenshot of the phone. Here we go. All right, let me get this to show real quick. Um, and. Boom, boom, boom. They fly okay. it manually and it keeps them locked in. This is a trick. So, this is a little behind the scenes. Let me turn this volume down. On other drones as well. And it's a really cool point of interest. And it's in some ways better. This than is exactly what we were just talking about. So, this is pretty cool. This is uh, the active track. And this is using the little eyeball in the middle. Yeah. So, basically, what this does for those as who are not familiar, see, it still tracks the subject so if you're moving or whatever and you're flying the drone at the same time it keeps the subject centered as you're flying it yeah and hopefully i can go time there we go let me rewind that there we go this is pretty cool both ways i can cut back and notice how it just keeps me this is this so nice pretty much the whole time yeah that was pretty cool <laughs> I mean, I tell you, the mountains make for such a cool background. Hey, you get this uh, like parallax effect. Yeah. That way too. If you want to do an orbit, this is the video that I'm in the middle of editing right now. And move it, and it will start moving around you as you walk, or jog, or bicycle, or whatever else you want to do. And so far, this is the only way that I've found you can actually get the drone to stay in front of you. Although it doesn't stay in front of you very long because it's tracking <laughs> you, so it's going to go around you, get in front of you, get behind you, get next to you. Yeah, that, that is That's the biggest cool. downside from the but videos. a way that I've easily been able to find. It's a butt-seeking drone. Let me turn the volume up. So yeah, so basically the, the thing that really bugged me about the Mavic Air 2 is that a lot of the pro promo videos showed it tracking things from in front. And I was like, yes, they can finally do it. Um, but they really did. Like the they promotion videos, they're out of this world. They are produced by a team that hasn't flown the drone. Yeah. So <laughs> and I, my assumption is all those shots where it was in front of something, someone was manually flying it. Yeah. And it can do that. I mean, there where I was showing you those clips earlier in the uh, the mountains and the trees and stuff, um, it, it didn't have enough space for me to really get it cranking like that. Like if we were up at the top of the mountain above the tree line and I was manually flying it, then it might have been different. I, I want to still go back, back up there, do similar run where I'm above the trees and there's no trees and see if it attract track me as I go down. Now, the only problem is one, you're dropping an elevation and the original Mavic Air had a horrible time with dropping in fast elevation. Um, and then 
if, if it loses me there, the second problem is now I'm holding this big controller in my hand as I'm doing this activity, as I'm snowboarding. You know, you, you can't be holding something like that. So this is not meant to be an active track drone for yourself, at least, as you're yeah. doing activities. Like you could easily select somebody else that's doing an activity and still sit there and manually fly it. And that's great. And it's probably really good for that, especially in this particular mode where it's in that eyeball mode, not the trace mode. Um, what do you know the name of that eyeball mode? What is that called? Uh, isn't it just point of interest? Maybe. Or spotlight. Yeah, but that, that it was, mode. It was called spotlight in the old days. Let's see. Does it show on the screen here? No, oh, I just have it going the whole time. I'm rewinding to see if we can. What am I doing there? But this this is so cool. Like this just right here. Hmm. And it's just taken off and so cool. And someone was asking where you get the orbiter. Just it, it shows up. You see on the right here. Um you can see the yellow and then the middle to stop and then the left. So those are all different ways. And in the middle, there's an eyeball. And those are all different ways to do it. When you're on the right, it pops up that little slider that you see that's very faint. This is slow. You can make it to the right or to the left to orbit to the right or the left of you while you're doing your activity. Mm. Big thing you got to keep in mind, though, don't have some trees around you when you do it because there's no side sensors. No side sensors. Nope. So if you're doing something like this and trying to fly through an area with obstacles, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, something big and open in a field or something like this, totally fine. But um, I definitely wouldn't uh, recommend this in some kind of condensed um, area. All right, let me get my screen. It looks like you got a, something to share here. Let me figure out how to get yours on there. No, oh, no, no that, that's that not yours. That was failed video. From oh, okay. <laughs> how do I get it off? <laughs> I, I can't figure out how to take it away. <laughs> Did you have another one that you wanted to share, Henrik? Yeah, let's just try this uh, one as a final one. Let's say that's the final clip. Just a second. This actually happened uh, when I first got the drone for uh, for borrowing it. Can you see it now? Uh, yes, let me add it. Here we go. So let's just start from the beginning. Let me make it full picture here for everybody. There we go. So you can see, uh, I, I was sitting there below the tree, and I was uh, flying the first battery with the with the, the Mavic Air. Is that and that guy I, coming up behind you? So this guy, he's he's sort of walking there, and I didn't. I saw him on the on the screen, but I didn't pay much uh, attention to it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he stops, and then you kind of know if if you have a guy in a blue coat that has binoculars. You know he's not looking for birds. <laughs> yeah. He's looking for your drone or something. A little yes, bit. he was. And then I was just sitting there concentrating. So what he what he says there is, uh, you know, you are actually not allowed to fly your drone here, <laughs> and that's uh, where everything started to go. Uh, so I answer him. Uh, I know that. Uh, I know that I'm allowed to fly there, and then uh, everything took off from there, and we had a pretty uh, hefty uh, talk for uh, for at least uh, a couple of minutes. Did it get heated? Is the question. If he, no, heated like uh, angry. Did he get angry? Uh, uh, yeah, and no, I don't think he was angry. He was just like an asshole, not understanding it, not listening to anything that I said. And I was having the drone that was hanging out over the water. Uh, so it was kind of, uh, say, he caught me in a, in a really bad time because I was in the, uh, in the middle of recording a video. I had like three cameras rolling and I had the drone that I borrowed uh, that was hanging over the water. So it was really not a, a good uh, approach. But I don't know what he expected, that he could just walk up to me and say, you're not allowed to fly here. And I would say, uh, yes, thank you, sir. I will land immediately, and, yeah. uh, and I would. I was not prepared to do that because uh, I had investigated everything about that area before I went down there. I have even called the police, uh, which in Denmark it's like that. If you're a certified pilot, you need to um, notify the police 24 hours before that you're going out and flying. I made the decision very late, so I didn't have 24 hours to uh, sort of notify uh, to inform the police. 
And in that case, you have to call them and tell them and uh, just send in the form anyway yeah. and then call them. And uh, so in case somebody is complaining, it was Friday evening, so uh, people could sit out in their garden and stuff. And then if they see a drone, then they could call the police and saying uh, 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 they're feeling uh, uh, disturbed by this. And uh, so everything was put on record. And uh, and I checked. I have an an app that will allow me to check the area uh, where you're allowed to uh, to fly there. And that was green. I know there are certain parts of this pond that you're not allowed to go because it's like a restricted area for birds. Mm -hmm. And of course, I wasn't going there. So so he was absolutely wrong. And uh, and uh, he kept. Um, saying that uh, that uh, I was not allowed to fly over forest and lakes and that was sort of his statement hmm. and and then um, I was furious when when this happened uh, you can't see it on the video when I just when I posted on the channel uh, you would you would see the whole thing you could see me and him interacting uh, I would never show his face because that's not the point of, of uh, highlighting this but I do want to bring out a discussion uh, about how people are approaching uh, drone pilots because this was not the right way, not at all. Yeah, and, you know, people don't realize sometimes you're in the middle of something and the way they approach you could actually mess up the way you're flying and cause some damage. Yeah. But, you know, and, and I find it funny because whenever I first started this whole thing um, with the drones and the YouTube, everyone thought you were getting spied on. Everyone and their mom. Yeah. Was like, you're spying on me and i made I'm, sh I'm sure you remember the video i'm talking about i made that video yeah. i'm spying on the girl yeah. in the bushes and um you know it, it, people still think that six seven years later that's yeah. still what people are thinking like there was a comment the other day on like one of our uh, local facebook uh, neighborhood groups about who's flying that drone in our neighborhood that's horrible it's annoying and it's probably yeah. me <laughs> It's probably you. <laughs> but what? in the comments below, everyone's just shoot it out of the sky. Just shoot it. Yeah, like, people get really pissed. Yeah. I also have this. Uh, I have this Danish uh, Facebook group, and every time people post anything in there uh, that just, even though they don't know the circumstances, uh, they, the drone police is pulling out, and people are ending up in big fights about, yeah. Stuff no. like that. It's amazing how people can get pissed off by drones. Yeah, and and most people can spy better with their phones than they could with a drone. Yeah, and they have a full fledged uh, like uh, some have what now the new Samsung phones with twenty times zoom. Right. <laughs> I have my neighbor across the neighborhood now. He's in his backyard. Oh, this is a great question. Bob says, "What would I like to see in a firmware change?" And immediately something comes to mind about the Air Two and the Fly app. Something that I think they missed out on and the go for app if you've flown any of the other dji drones for the battery has a slider across the top of the screen and as you're flying it slowly depletes and you can set what you want your warnings at if you want it at 20 percent, 30 percent to return to home and all that on the fly app it has a little icon on the right you can tap it but it doesn't really give you any more information but if you're flying it's sort of hard to move your hands to tap it at the same time that you're flying. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't really just glance down at it while you're flying and see where you're at. And on top of it, it's white on white and I'm flying in clouds and there's white skies and you can't see it half the time. So yeah, that's DJI. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's, that's kind of strange. I think that's an Android thing that is designed like that. I, really? I you can just pop it on. It's, it's, a, it's like a black background with white letters on no, mine's just uh, the what I'll show you. Look, look right yeah. here. Let's uh, let me let me share the screen. Well, maybe it's a setting. I don't know. No, there's, there's a lot less settings in this one. So look at the top of my screen right here. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. You can see the battery is 76 there, and well, it's well, not. If you touch it, uh, when you touch it, it opens a little box with a couple other settings. But notice right there when the clouds behind it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you can't see. Yeah, that's the same. It's just uh, if you touch it, you can see what's uh, when you can see the, the the voltage of each cell. Yeah, but it doesn't right show you like like the slider. You could just glance down. Yeah. And look at it. You don't have to yeah, touch yeah. anything. And it was just it was such a good design, and I don't see any reason that couldn't be implemented on this. And a lot of people seem to agree that that white on white is just sort of silly. But like I'm flying, and normally when I'm flying and, and doing something, I don't want to stop and have to touch the screen thing. But 
it is what it is. I'm missing uh, the gimbal controls. Oh, to be able to slow them down? No, yes. Let me tell you a little something. Actually, actually, the best implementation they've done of that was with the Mavic Air 1. Because you could have, like, you know, uh, if if you really want this buttery smooth uh, revealing and all that stuff, you, you really need to crank down the speed uh, speed and up with the smoothness of, uh, of uh, the gimbal. But it's really not practical if you're flying just normally. Yeah, so it would be nice to have several separate modes, and you could do that with the original one if you remember. There oh, was like yeah, three yeah, different yeah. settings. Save it. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. You can make your own custom and yeah, save yeah, it. Yeah. So that would be so nice if you had a way of uh, of uh, just switching into a, like a yeah, like a custom cinematic mode or something. Yeah, kind of like what the GoPro Max lets you set up your pre or the GoPro Eight. I can't remember which one lets you set up your pre things with your own little names on it. Just like and the, also, you don't have the option to set the the, the custom stick settings uh, like the expo settings. No. They, those are also not available. However, when you're switching from tripod mode to regular mode to sports mode, it changes yeah. your gimbal speed. It changes your stick speed. Yeah, yeah probably, speed. probably. But it, but it doesn't take all the customization out of yeah. it. If you like it in a certain way, you can't really do that. I do have to say though that I am very impressed with your however the sticks feel and those settings in the drone like like i oh there's a little secret you can actually touch the screen did you see that you can touch the screen and move yeah. the camera and you can also go sideways yep you can go up down sideways left right you can see the little sliders there this is all from the video that i'm editing right now um this is unedited version of it this is just background clips of me trying to test this stuff out so notice i, I just selected parallel and for those of you who don't know parallel is supposed to sort of put the drone to the side of you however because you know, uh, Sean, if you changed, uh, if you shifted to an electric unicycle, you would have both hands available. <laughs> you you see what a pain in the ass it is to, to film this kind of stuff. I got one controller here, and I'm holding the damn Mavic controller here. But notice it, it won't go to the side of me on this. I switched it back to Trace because it wasn't working on parallel. And I think that it notices the trees and that the, the ground is higher. So yeah. to really get use out of this one, um, and active track, you have to be somewhere flat without trees or following behind with trees with spacing. Um, it can do it, but it's it's nothing like what they were trying to say that it could do on this version. Um, it's it's not even close to what the Skydio can do on tracking. On tracking on the Skydio, I could put it on the side of me, and it would actually weave in and out of those trees, no problem. Can you outrun it on the skateboard? Did What's you that? It? Can you outrun it so it loses you? Um, on this one, yeah. I didn't try. I, I didn't try to lose it. That's something I could go do, though. That's an interesting question. Yeah. I mean, winding uh, winding back and forth. Now, I, holding the controller in my hand while I'm doing it is such a pain, though. So that's what I'm saying. Like, um, if you were filming someone else and they didn't have anything in their hands, they could just go skate, then it would be fine. Because I wouldn't need the beacon. It's just it's using active track by me selecting the feature that it's tracking where with the Skydio, you can do that too. Um, so I guess it's not that big of a deal, but if you want to film yourself, you can put the controller away and have this tiny little beacon in your hand. That's not in the way, which makes tracking yourself a lot easier. Um, let's see. Alan asked if he thinks a software update will improve the active track. And that's, that's an interesting question because it's not bad. And I don't think it's a software that's that's making it bad. It's no. different than the Skydio 2 active track. That, it, there's just some limitations that uh, to what you can do uh, because you don't have the sensors. Yeah, and you notice right there it got off of me and now it's tracking a bush. Yeah, but I had a problem with the uh, I tried to do a point of interest at the castle. Yeah. I used one of the towers and it lost that too. So yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to miss a castle that size. Yeah. So, so, I, so of course they will improve it over time, but it is. But I, I do think it's going to be a better drone for following from behind. You know, it does have the parallel, which is sort of not exactly to your left or right. It's it's more like if it's left right behind you a little bit, so the drone is angled. Uh, that way, it's still using its front sensors to try to not hit stuff. Hmm. But um, I mean, but but, but with all that said, it. it it's, we do have to recognize the work they put into this uh, 
because I, I I work professionally with a team of uh, vision engineers, and it's uh, it's amazing how difficult this is to that they can pull it off to to this level uh, of consumer easiness. That's uh, quite amazing. Yeah, and I mean, and every time they're making, I almost feel like you know how iPhones and things come out every year. I almost yeah. feel like maybe these drones should stop coming out every year. Maybe they should skip every two years. You know, because the technology is, it's almost like it's peaking, you know, like they, they maybe just give it a little more time for the technology to catch up. Yeah. Because there's not a lot different between the Air 2 and my Zoom, honestly. Um, I, I need to go out and do some, I shouldn't be testing the Air 1 or the Air 1 against the Air 2 because it's, honestly, I, I think the Air 2 is more of a Zoom light or a Mavic 2 Pro light. In a sense. Yeah, but I, of course there will be a lot of people interested in uh, if they should uh, pull the trigger on an update if they already own the Air One. That's true. So it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. hard. I'm having to make Air One and Air Two videos, Mavic Zoom and Air Two videos because it, it really, in reality, to me, it's a lot more like my my Zoom. Yeah, it flies really, really nicely. Yeah, it does. It, it's uh, that controller is, I mean. I give a lot of props to that controller. It's so much nicer than I thought it was going to be. It's actually a little bit crazy to think about it. How much is the Zoom? Is that what, $1,200, $1,300? About 13 yeah. And this one, and that might be without the Flymore, actually. So so, uh, so you're paying maybe $500 or more extra to get yeah. the Zoom? So it's uh, and what do you actually get for those five hundred dollars? You get the zoom capabilities. Yeah, the zoom capabilities, which are but you get a you get a worse sensor. The sensor is actually smaller on the zoom than yeah, it is. Yeah, that is in, true. Uh, that is true. Um, you're getting uh, the side sensors, of course, on the yeah, zoom. The side sensors are on the zoom. They're not on this, which do come yeah. in handy if you're in trees and terrain. You're, that's you're getting uh, the extra IMU for safety. That's huge. With the with the with the zoom, yeah. That, I was I actually also said that I also complained about that in my latest video with the eleven things that I didn't like about the drone. But then I heard this podcast from Billy and Ken, huh? original Dobo, and they were debating this issue as well. If, if the, the sort of the safety about having a dual system on board, and. I think it was Billy that asked a really interesting question. How many times have you actually seen it switch? How many times have you actually ended up in having a IMU error that made it switch? I have no idea because I don't think it pops up on the screen and tells you. It just does it. I think it does. I think it tells you. I don't because know. That, that's a, that's no. a warning that something goes wrong. I can tell you from experience from old drones that had only one IMU. I was a huge fan of when they started putting two IMUs. I think it was the Phantom 4 that was the first one yeah. that had two IMUs. Yeah. Um, all the drones before it was one IMUs, and there is a huge, huge history of drones having flyaways with one IMUs of all brands. DJI used to have it. Um, the uh, the Blade Chromas had it. The Blade 350s had it. Yeah. And I'm talking true flyaways where you're you're moving your sticks. And nothing happens. You have no input whatsoever on the drone. I tried that with my Mavic uh, Pro. It was like uh, I thought I lost it. Oh, that's scary. But uh, but uh, but for some reason I I don't know per instinct I switched the uh, the flight mode switch, and for some reason it stopped. But it was I don't know two kilometers away or something, very very far away. I couldn't see it at all. Oh, wow. Check out this story. Sunrise uh, Water Media shared with us. Someone confronted him once at a job site. He thought it, someone was spying on him. He explained what was going on. Uh, construction progress images. A few minutes later, the guy was shooting BBs at his drone. Did you go put your foot up his ass? God, I would I'd be so pissed. <laughs> I would be so mad, dude, if somebody was doing that. Uh, hey, he, he shout out been... to 03. There you go. There's your shout out. Um, let's see anything. Uh, it says something. We might get something with the smart controller update. I'm not sure. I'm so behind on the chat. I'm not sure what he was referring to anymore. Um, yeah, but that's, um, that's because the smart controller is not supported right now. 
Yeah. So if you if you pay these, uh, I don't know what is it, thousand dollars for the smart controller, you won't be able to use it with the Mavic Air Two. I said this right now. Smart controllers costing a thousand dollars. Yeah, I think it's uh, something like that. That's insanity. That's that's. It's very very expensive. They raised the price. They introduced it at some price, and then they raised the price uh, like to insane. Wow. Wow, I don't think I'll be buying the smart controller for a thousand dollars, especially with the screen underneath it, because I actually forgot how much I like the screen being on top until the Mavic Air 2, you know, and I put the screen back on top. And and they were smart to do it the way they did it because the way that phones are now going borderless, yeah, you can still swipe on your edges of your phone to do stuff like screen recording and or answer text or do whatever you're doing. Uh, where in the old Mavic um controller setup it's becoming harder and harder to actually do things with your phone because of the way the phones become bigger it's uh, 749 the smart controller that's still quite a bit then you can uh, switch uh, you can switch to to the the image from no no yeah you can share your screen if you want to share if you've got that up well we'll show the smart controller and, and Adrian, I agree 100%. If they would to have made this Air 2 the a similar form factor to the original with the, the changes, it would be amazing, especially if they still let you use your, your phone and stuff. There you go. So that is the smart controller, yeah. which is now if I'm – it works with most OcuSync drones. Yes. But um, it doesn't currently work with the Air. I actually heard another rumor What's because that? Uh, the goggles will, uh, for some reason, not be supported at all. I thought that was supposed to be coming in the future. Yeah, but I heard something else that they might make it compatible with the new FPV glasses. Hmm. Instead. Interesting. Like, um... I, I think the problem with the, with this it was something with the software versions, uh, because to be able to. Uh, fly with the new goggles, it, they should support 64-bit code on the Android apps. And now I'm talking about something that I don't 100% know, but this is at least what I was told. And, uh, and, um, and the goggles are not able to support that. Oh, here we go. Rick Halber just got the smart controller in. So maybe he can take a minute and let us know and everyone that's in the chat know if it yeah. was worth $749 freaking dollars. <laughs> From what I understand, the screen is a lot brighter than our phone screens are, the uh, the nits or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh... well, everybody's in the chat asking if Rick how they like it there. We got Adrian uh, asking. I, From what I hear, it worked really good. I personally wish that they would flip-flop it. You know, and if they're going to put the screen in, pop it on the top, put the, the, the sticks on the bottom, you know. I mean, they obviously made it work for the uh, – yeah, but but how how because how would you then hold it in a, in, a, in a good way? Uh, it'd have to be bigger, I guess. Yeah, exactly. One at the bottom, and yeah. well, you know what? I, I don't have the controller with me, but you know, an Xbox controller or a PlayStation Four controller with thumbsticks. There's barely any controller below the thumbsticks on one of those, and it fits ergonomically in your hand really well. So. They might just have to change the shape instead of having a big old rectangle and change the shape into something more like a controller, like something we're more used to for video games. I mean, there's no reason that they 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 could pay someone to figure it out. They make plenty of money off of us. <laughs> and now you're saying video controllers. It's actually funny. There was a guy that was approaching me, telling me that he's he's actually flying in mode three with his drone. Yeah. And that's because that's compatible. That's the way that the, these game controllers work. So it's much easier for him to operate it that way than the, the traditional mode two that almost everybody else is using. How is mode three again? I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't know what it is. It's just it's it, it just aligns with the way that a game controller is uh, designed. Yeah. Huh. So are you you're flying mode two? Yeah. With with uh, the throttle on the left. Uh, the up and down is on the left. The yeah. forward. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. The, the stock yeah. mode that comes, yeah. Yeah, because uh, mode one was actually uh, US driven at some point in the old days. 
Um, you know, I have mine here. I can actually pull it up if you want and turn it on and check the modes. Or oh, that actually might be a cool video is to actually go through and fly. I've never flown it in any of the other modes. That could be. Um, you know, you know, you can do this uh, Sam Colder trick with uh, reversing the the sticks. What's the which is the what, flying backwards thing? Yes, yes. So you basically reverse the sticks so you can turn the drone 180, 180 degrees and then it operates normally like uh, it would. Huh. So, if, so if you fly forward, then it would basically fly backward and, and then the opposite way around. So in yeah. that way, you can very easily control it through a windshield, not through a windshield, but through like windows rolled down in a car, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, that might actually be a pretty fun video, I, you know, to go... Mm -hmm and try all the different modes and yeah. from someone who's really used to the one mode and how hard is it to flip flop to the other modes? It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, dang. Rick says the controller is very bright. The screen on the controller is very bright and he spent $950 on it. Then I think there's two models. I think he got the extra bright one. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if you're going to spend that much, you might as well get the extra bright one. That's for sure. Adrian, I appreciate that so much, man. I definitely appreciate you guys who, like I said earlier, that that watch the channel, uh, drone content, GoPro content. I do have some uh, Insta 361 R stuff I have to make soon. Um, so uh, there's going to be some more Mavic Air stuff, but over the summer you're going to see some more GoPro stuff and some more Insta 361 R stuff. Uh, I'm hopefully getting the Insta 361 R kit, the drone kit that puts the 360 hammer on both sides of the drone. And I'm gonna get to mess with that. They're they're talking about sending me that, and that would be pretty cool. So hopefully so. Um, oh, that's so funny, dude. But I read your comment here. It says keep on droning and keep pawn flying. For a second, my eyes said keep porn flying, and I was like, what? <laughs> what? what are you talking about, Adrian? That could make a funny video too. Like you get like a centerfold and tape it to the bottom of your drone and fly around with a centerfold or something flapping around, <laughs> or maybe a blow up doll. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I think we're getting pretty much. Uh, you got anything else you want to share or anything? We've been on for an, almost two hours. Uh, it's funny, though. That, let me. When Henrik and I get talking, we get talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't have any more. Uh, okay. my, my playlist is completely exhausted. I have tons, but they're going to stutter and not look so good because of the way that we're filmed. So I'll have to yeah. uh, pull them up into the uh, final cut. So whenever I come onto your show, we can share some of them without having. I think that. you should uh, you should uh, definitely um, prepare some of that Skydio versus uh, um, Air Two stuff. I think that will interest uh, my viewers a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, um, and also, of course, if you have a final video about it, we can plug that one too, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, I've great. got a few more test videos before I make the final one. I'm collecting a bunch of footage and a bunch of stuff and getting my thoughts together. But just so you guys who are still here or watching in the replay, Henrik, I'm not sure when you're planning on doing your, your live show, uh, if it's going to be this week or next week. But Henrik's going to have a live show, and I'm going to jump in on his and hopefully have my, my footage all fixed so that it will work. Uh, better when we play it on his. So if you guys aren't subscribed to Henrik's channel, Tech Drone Media, let's uh, let's see if we can if I can pull it up maybe in um, Tech Drone Media and put it in the chat so you guys can subscribe to it. Yeah, that would be nice. It's We're always there. very much appreciated. I'm trying to find it right now. Here we go. Boom and in the chat. If you guys have not subscribed to his channel, I definitely recommend it. He's one of the nicest guys in the drone community that I know um, and makes some great fun content. And he has a different view of things because he is from a different country than we are here in America. <laughs> That's true. I, I think that your channel more unique. Yeah. In some ways it is. So, but his link is in the description there, or not the description. It's in the in the comment in the chat. Yeah, it's in the chat. I just posted it. No, it's not a link. It's not linking. <laughs> no, it should link. Yeah, it links. I clicked it and it opens up a new window. Okay. Yeah, it's not a link. I don't know. Okay. Why. No, it's not linking for you. Is the link working for anyone else? Let me know. <laughs> Adrian here. He's he's uh, he's on your channel. That's awesome. Says he's a big supporter. That's good. That's good. And thank you to everybody that has already decided to subscribe. 
And he says he's been supporting you for a very long time. That's dope. That's really good. Yeah. You get to watch us grow and learn to edit our videos better, learn what kind of content people like. Um, and it's a learning game for all of us. Like there is no manual with YouTube that really tells you how to figure it all out. So that's we can testify to that, Sean. Yeah. Every time we think we've figured it out, <laughs> we, we don't know. We don't know anything. <laughs> it's such a pain in the ass. But yeah, they're, they're all saying the link is working, so that's good. And they, oh, that's cool. Everybody's up. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll wrap this up. Uh, you know, it's time to go home and light up the grill and uh, make some burgers and enjoy the rest of the day. And I think it's pretty late there for Henrik. It's got to be yeah, almost. I, I, I need to go now. to bed. <laughs> So, but how does this time slot work for everybody? Like starting at uh, one o'clock, or for Henrik, I think it was nine o'clock. Uh, it which was perfect I, for me. Yeah, because it's after your dinner time, and you get to spend some time with the family. And yeah. and it's noon or one o'clock. You guys, let me know. Uh, Joe Black is like, wow, you're still on. Yeah, Joe, we we are some chatters, man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, if you watch this and somehow you see this at the very end, let me know in the comments what questions you have and i'll make a proper video trying to uh take your questions and test the mavic air 2 about them so the more videos are coming it's just time consuming to edit this stuff i have uh probably five or so videos ready to edit, that i'm ready to edit it's just time consuming guys so just bear with me i'm trying to get one or two up possibly if not more a week on the air 2 um and i'm going to be testing that with the skydio 2 as well as with the mavic zoom so you know what, what? You know what I want to just want to uh, highlight a, a fun fact is that right. uh, less than three percent of the channels on YouTube make it uh, beyond ten thousand subscribers. Are you kidding me? Really? Hmm. So it's, well, uh, I feel good because I hit twelve. Yes. I'm like almost yes. at twelve. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, I get problems because like I feel like the channel is just not going anywhere because I do do so many different things and it's so hard to grow. But then I look at my views and my view counts yes. wow, way up there. And the it's comments. Just, yeah, who has such a beautiful community? With but a lot of people in the subs. It's such a slow growth, such yeah. a slow growth for me. But hopefully, um, I'm going to be making a new channel trailer that helps people understand what the channel is more about. Because right now, I, I just have another video stuck up as my channel trailer, and that's probably the wrong way to go. And I keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off because I want to make other content. But I, I think that's a pretty important one to make. Yeah. And uh, yeah, everyone's just saying they subscribe to you, subscribe to me. Um, Agent K says, good for me, Sean. I'm better than 3%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all, yeah, I didn't know that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's such a small number, really. Yeah, I mean, it's because we're always looking at these big channels that are having hundreds of thousands of subscribers and thinking, oh, okay, okay we, how can we ever get as big as those? Uh, and and I, thought, I hope we will be someday. But it's not bad what we have done so far. You're getting close. I mean, you're almost to 50. That's amazing. Like Henrik and I, like we were saying earlier in this chat, we were both under a thousand. Our number, we hit a thousand almost exactly at the same time, if I recall. It was so close to each other. Yeah. And my channel just hit 12, 12, 12 3, I think. And you're at 45, aren't you? Or 46? Oh, no, no. 43. 43. Um, I just turned 43, yeah. Yeah, so that subscriber count. And what's very interesting for those who are making videos on YouTube, what is your view count at? I'm at about 4.5 million now. Yeah, I'm at 4.1. See, and that's so interesting to me because at 12,000 subscribers, my view counts through the roof for that amount. I don't know anybody at my subscriber like like at 12,000 with that many views. Like I, 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 It must just be because I have a few videos that sort of went viral. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah, but but it, but it's always as we talked about. It's it's uh, the subscribers they will come if you produce good content and you get a lot of views, then the subscribers will come. So so view is definitely beating uh, subscribers. Yeah, and uh, you know, and I I try not to stress it. I see the numbers, and it does sometimes it brings you down. Like my goal is to at least hit a hundred thousand subscribers. So I want to get a silver play button. Yeah, you know, me too. <laughs> I, I've got the, uh, let me show you. This is so you, you've seen this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, what if I broke it? That would suck. Okay, so 
I wish the date was on this, but it's not. I should write it on the back. But when I hit a thousand subscribers, <laughs> Gina gave me this. It's it's a little piece of clay that she painted all gold and wrote it's it really down. Nice. I thought that was so cool. You can go I, back and check your stats and figure out when you hit. Yeah. A thousand. I, I should write the date like right right there or something. I think that would be pretty cool. It's been a while. I was looking at that the other day and. It's it's funny because you you can see when you get a new product if it's a product people are interested in you'll you'll see your growth and then all of a sudden no products and you'll slowly grow and then some something, something happens it's crazy but uh, you know let's wrap this up I know Henrik's got to get to sleep I appreciate you coming on here Henrik and it's always uh, a pleasure do you know when you're gonna do your live stream your next live stream uh, I I don't know because my plans are a little sketchy at the moment uh, going back and forward. Uh, Maybe in the something. next two weeks, somewhere in the next two weeks. Hopefully. Yeah, 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 yeah. Within the next two weeks, that's definitely going to happen. And what is the next video you're pumping out? What's what should everyone expect on your stream next? Maybe the Birdman. The, okay, the Birdman. So that's the video for you guys who have just tuned in. Yeah, we're going to take a serious discussion about this guy. <laughs> that video is going to be all about uh, you know people approaching. Uh, people flying drones that have no, no idea what they're about and being all angry and trying to tell you what to do and how you react. Because if I recall, when that happened, you were so flustered, you hit me up and you're like, I can't believe this happened. And I, I lost my cool. And you were telling me how you lost your cool. Yeah, I thought I did because uh, I was like really exploding inside because this, he was such an idiot. But but watching the video, it doesn't seem like I'm that uh, angry. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I couldn't understand a word you said. So. No, but I, I will narrate it, of course. Yeah. Uh, I will break it up into smaller pieces and narrate exactly what happened. And uh, of course, uh, I'm not out to get this guy. I don't care about him. So I would disguise his face, but I would still keep the audio, so at least to so get an idea of uh, of uh, how it played out. Excellent. And then, well, then there could be some some discussions on the on the backside of that. So it would be interesting to hear how other people are dealing with that kind of stuff because yeah. it's, I've I've I found it very very uh, incriminating. What you can say, it's uh, it, yeah. it kind of ruined the whole experience yeah, uh, that evening. Or sour taste in your mouth, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and that'd be interesting. I think you'll get a lot of good discussions, hopefully, in the comments on that. And that's something that I like to tell people to do is to not just write your own comment, but go through other people's comments and get to know each other. Write a reply to their yeah. comment and get some interaction going. And that's how we really build these communities into a group of people that we actually start to really know. All of us, we all get to know each other. And, and that's the way to do it. Just writing a comment and bailing, it's great. It's appreciated. But getting that community to talk back and forth and us – you know, I try to answer 90 to 99% of the comments that are left on my channel. So um, yeah. the problem I find, I don't know if you found a solution for this, is if someone does a reply to my comment after their comment, I don't get notifications of it. So a lot of times that's where I start missing comments. I won't get a second comment to somebody because I don't even know it's there. No, that, the only way is uh, through the YouTube studio and that just scroll through the comments yeah. and just see what's if anybody new has... But, you know, I mean, there's comments on videos from years ago that people are still commenting on and it doesn't notify you. So if you are re my point is, if you're making a comment and you really want us to see it, and this goes for any YouTuber, make a new one. Don't reply to another comment um, because we won't get notified. Joe, just to tell you, 50 is a nice number. It's uh, when you reach 100, the first 100 subscribers, those are the worst. And from that, it gets easier. And, and you have to recall that everybody starts from zero. Yeah, I've got my new channel, um, the, the World of Nature. It's it's not even hit 100 subscribers yet. Um, I'm not plugging it as much as I'm, I should, and I'm hoping that YouTube pushes it. And that's the problem is I'm, I'm focused on this channel and don't really focus on other ones. It's hard once you split up and do more than one channel. That is. I also uh, made a personal one, uh, which... I'm not I know, I haven't seen as much as... I haven't seen in a while on that one. <laughs> It's hard. I actually do have an interesting video that I recorded, which uh, I'm debating with myself if I should post it on the main channel or on the the, yeah. the, the personal channel. Uh, we were riding through like an amusement park this, uh, when was it? This Sunday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And you know, because of the pandemic, everything is closed. Normally, this is uh, hugely populated uh, during uh, this time of year and you can't 
ride your electric unicycle in there. So I put the GoPro Max on the front of uh, the wheel and then rode uh, through uh, all of that stuff and making some footage there. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, the GoPro Max is a killer camera. You can put it on both channels if you wanted to. Yeah, I love my GoPro Max. I really, yeah. I'm really glad you convinced me to get that one. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's it's amazing. With that Horizon lock on there, and if the next GoPro Nine is a combination of the GoPro Max and the GoPro Eight with all the features together, I will spend my money. Boom, take it, just take it. But also, if you notice, I use it a lot to film my remote when I'm out flying yeah. and stuff it's like that. So they, it has, it has such a wide field of view, yeah. so it's easy to capture everything. I was using my eight and I was only filming half of the controller half the time. And I actually noticed you were using the max and I was like, why didn't I think to use that? It's got a wider field of view. So I've been using the max lately. Oh, look at that. Agent K shared my new channel. He is, I'm glad I gave him a wrench, man. He's killing it as a moderator. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much. You know, and I don't even know his real name. Every time I've asked, he says, just call me K. <laughs> 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 well, he's dope. He's great, man. The support and the, and the community we have built up here on all these channels is just awesome. So let's uh, go ahead, Henry, Go ahead. Yeah, I say I just confirm it's 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 great with these communities and it and these live streams. They are making us everybody. If if a lot of people show up like they've done uh, this evening, it's really fun to make them. Yeah, yeah, it is fun. Uh, I suck at these endings, though. I got to figure out how to end these better. <laughs> I, I'll just wrap it up, and we'll just call it a day. Thanks, everybody. Right? You yeah, need a video outro. We do. I do. You you know, I could put the same intro as the outro. We could just yeah, roll this and be like. <laughs>